Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it comes from a translation of a message that I received. The translation reads like this. Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? So I am a witch doctor who is here in his country in Zim. Brother Nashi, I want to confess to you that I drink human blood. It's not like I drink this human blood each and every day, but these are the terms and the condition of the covenant that I had with the man who strengthened me. So the covenant is that each and every year, it must be in November, when we are resting as traditional healers. As you know that in our country, November is the holy month and no traditional ceremony is supposed to be held in the month of November. So that is when I drink human blood at the time when we believe that our ancestors will be resting in the mountains so as to maintain my powers. And I sacrificed my mother. Unfortunately, this was in 2007 when I became a witch doctor. As for my mother, she was struck by lightning. Brother Nashi, a lot of people across Southern Africa, they do come to visit me. My name is Name Hidden, and I have been known for many, many years as one of the most powerful traditional healers in my country. And indeed, there are people that do come to my homestead from across our region. And when they come to me, they will be seeking my help. They come to me with their problems, seeking wealth, protection, revenge, and I have given them whatever that they wanted. But what no one knows is the price that I have to pay, the price that I have paid to maintain these powers, because these powers, they have an expiry date. Each and everything that is in this world, it is an expiry date. If you go to a traditional healer, if a healer gives you a charm, if he tells you that this charm does not have an expiry date, you need to know that you are dealing with a skama. Each and every ritual has to constantly be renewed. I have been keeping this secret for a very long time and it feels as if there is a heavy burden that is on my shoulder and it feels like I cannot keep on running away from what I have done and I feel like I just need to confess everything. It all began, it was in the year 2007 when I was initiated into the dark world of dark magic by this other man, a friend of mine who is a powerful traditional healer as, as well. He was also training me to become more like him. At that time, I was just a young man, but I was hungry for power and I was and I was hungry for respect. I wanted to be feared and to be revered in my village and I was willing to do anything so as to achieve that. I sought out the most feared witch doctors deep in the raw areas of Zim with that ban and they told me that if I wanted real power, I had to make the ultimate sacrifice. They told me that if I wanted to be powerful, as powerful as my mentor, then this meant that my mother had to die. When I got scared, then that man laughed at me because he was like, don't you know that the reason as to why most of my siblings had to die, they had to die so that I can be as powerful as I am. He laughed at me and he said, don't you know that underneath my chair, because at his consultation room, he used to have this other chair, which looked more like a throne. So he used to joke and he used to say that when he is about to consult, when he starts to consult with people, then he brings in spiritually the skulls of his siblings. So when he would have brought the skulls of his siblings, they will be underneath his chair and they will be whispering to him. Let's say that maybe the person is from Namibia who would have come to his consultation room. So those siblings of his that he sacrificed, their spirits, they would fly from our country going to Namibia. They will make a quick research. Then they will see the kind of a life that this person lives then they will return back to him you know everything that happens in the spiritual realm it happens really fast a spirit can fly from zim to namibia within a second and it can return back with so much information so it would have gathered information on how this person used to live his life and which school the person went to what type of a meal the person had before he had left his country coming to our country so when you are giving the person such kind of a prophecy then the person will say that indeed 
this man he knows what he is doing so he told me that in order for me to be as powerful as he was my mother had to die i resisted but i agreed my desire for power and money had consumed me the rituals were dark and twisted they called upon the ancestral spirits and forces that i had never seen before on a stormy day, it was in November 2007, my mother was then struck by lightning in our village. People said and they thought that it was an accident, a tragedy that had hit the village, but I knew the truth. This was not accident. I had sacrificed her life for my own gain. After my mother's death, everything changed. The spirits of the ancestors came to me and I was filled with dark power. I could do things that no one else could do. People started coming to me from all over Southern Africa, you name it, South Africa, Botswana, Mozambique, Zambia, all seeking my help. I became rich, powerful, and feared, but deep down, I knew that my power came from the blood, the blood of my own mother, the woman who raised me to become the man that I was, but that was the only beginning the spirits demanded more each and every year in november as traditional healers when we are resting the month when my mother died as well i have to perform a, rit a ritual to renew my powers and these rituals it requires something terrible human blood at all the times every november i will drink human blood so as to keep my powers strong at first it was really difficult to find victims but over the years, Brother Nashi, I have become so skilled to deal with some people who work in different mortuaries. It is not a nice thing to do, knowing that when you are in October, you pray and you pray that there can be a fatal accident. And when that accident happens, there are those that collect blood. Don't you know that when an accident happens, it is an opportunity for people like us to harvest souls, to harvest body parts and to harvest blood as well so they are those that work on the ground that collect this blood usually this blood i will go and i will get it at the mortuary sometimes i can get a cup that will be full of fresh human blood and i have since spoken with this other woman who is working as a nurse i think that it is far much better for me to go and collect that blood straight from the blood bank at the hospital but i am still negotiating with that woman who is a nurse but it is such a terrible thing drinking the blood all these years brother nashi i feel that i cannot live with myself these spirits they can never be satisfied they demand blood they demand more sacrifices and there is no ending to it and whenever i say that i am tired then they'll be like what about the money that we gave to you that is the problem with the devil the devil like when he gives you something he does not forget he gives you a house then after you would have paid for that house you doing these rituals years later when you say that i am tired of forever performing these rituals then the devil will remind you and you will say but the money that you used to buy your house i was the one who gave you and you'll be like but i paid my debt then the devil will say that there is no one who will be able to pay what they owe to me i am always living in constant fear as if i am seeing my mother's face even in my dreams i know that my mom she is waiting for me i know that my mom is angry and rightfully so because i sacrificed a life for my own greed and now I am condemned to live in this nightmare. This is my own confession. When you post my story, please tell me so that I can follow through in the comment section.